What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mina and today's video is going to be just a regular old reading vlog. I don't have anything planned for this week other than the fact that I have a handful of books from the library that I borrowed weeks and weeks ago that are officially past the due date and I haven't read them. So the only plan for this week is to get through as many of them as possible. If I don't get through them, then that's okay. I can just get back to them at a later date in a different video, but I would love to get to them now because some of them have been my most anticipated reads of the year and I really wanna to get to them. So that's the plan for this week. I don't really have much more to say other than the fact that I hope I get that goal accomplished because that will be really great because these books have been on my TBR for a very long time. So without any further rambling, let's go and see how many I can knock out in a single week of reading. Hello, you heard by the intro what we're doing today. Today is Monday and today is going to be the start of a reading vlog. This is just a regular weekly vlog. I'm not gonna be doing anything crazy. I'm not gonna be doing anything out of pocket. I have a lot of books that I need to get to because I have a lot of books that I've checked out that need to go back to the library. Matter of fact, some of them are even a little bit overdue. So I need to get to them. And this week is going to be just me trying to knock out as many of those books out as possible in a week because otherwise all of them are going back to the library on Sunday and I'm just gonna have to turn them in whether I finish them or not. One of the books that I really absolutely need to get to because it is due today is Play Along by Liz Tom Ford. I don't know if you've been here. I don't know if you've seen my videos. I don't know if you've seen one of my 24 hour readathons or if you've been on YouTube in general. This is the fourth book I believe in the Windy City series by Liz Tom Ford, right? Because you have the first book that I DNF'd, then The Right Move, then the one with the single father, and then this. So I believe, yes, this is the fourth book in the series. And I DNF'd the first book, like I said. I loved, loved the second book with Ryan Shea. Ryan Shea, love you. The third one, I also ended up DNFing because I don't like the single father trope, and it was the single father trope. So this. I have heard a lot of people talk about this book. I've heard that the romance in this book is absolutely scrumptious. If here's anything like Cry and Shay, I'm sat front row center. I'm so excited to finally get back into this world. I hope that this isn't like the first and the third book where I end up DNFing it because I'm gonna be very disappointed. Sarah Caroli, I'm counting on you girl because you sold me on this book if you're watching this video, which I don't think she is. Hearing her gush about Powerless made me read Powerless and I absolutely ate it up. So hearing her gush about this made me want to read this to be like, okay, we have similar tastes and we usually like the same books. Let's go without me further rambling. Let's pick this book up. and I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love this book so much. I can't get enough of it. I can't get enough of Isaiah. I can't get enough of the banter. It's so fun. It's so fun. I'm giggling, laughing, kicking my feet, twirling my hair, losing my mind. I love it. I love it. I'm so glad to be loving it as much as I am. This is such a relief because I was so scared that this was gonna be like mile high but it's giving more of the right move and ooh, my phone cut me off because I ran out of space and ignore this little bar right here but I was just saying I can't wait till it gets a little bit more steamy because I know he's gonna give I know he's gonna give he won't disappoint me flying through this book. I am on page 251 out of 360 something 
if I'm not mistaken, 367. Yeah, so I'm 110 pages away from the end and I am absolutely flying through this book. I spent most of my day yesterday and most of my morning today reading this book. I cannot put it down. I love Isaiah. I love the man that he is. He reminds me so much of Ryan from The Right Move. And I absolutely adored The Right Move because of Ryan and how just adorable and like loving he was. But in the grumpy way that he was, Isaiah is just like this ball of sunshine who makes who loves to make everybody laugh. This book is about this girl and this guy, obviously. She wants to become a medical person on the like baseball team and he is a baseball player on that team and somehow one thing leads to another they meet and now they have to be fake married and that's the plot so basically the trope is like fake dating fake marriage type of situation and there's so many instances because he's so obsessed with her before they even get married he like flirts with her all the time and likes her Whenever she calls herself his wife, he's like melting and dying and screaming and crying. I cannot get enough of this book. It is so absolutely adorable and so funny and so fun. And I definitely recommend it because if you haven't read a book by Liz Tom Ford that is either the right move or play along, you're missing out. And they actually say the name of this book quite a few times in the book, which because a few times he tells her, he's like, come on wife, play along. I melt every time when I tell you I'm giggling, cackling, kicking my feet. It's been a while that I've had like the motivation to just marathon a book from beginning to end, but this book I cannot put down. I am so entertained, so entertained. I'm gonna finish it and then I'll come back to you with my final thoughts and what we're gonna be reading next because this has taken such a, such a fun, entertaining turn. golden i have finished play along by liz tom ford i think you would be happy to know that i absolutely gave this five stars because there was nothing less that i could possibly give it this was so fun such a fun experience such a fun reading time i absolutely adore isaiah i adore i adore honestly the entire cast because you've seen them go from mile high all the way up to this and also i realized because in the end it tells you what the next book is which is called i believe rewind it back or something like that but it's rio's book and i'm so excited because the way that he is in the end of this book is so funny and i understand him completely he is my guy i hope i love it i hope it gives this type of vibe i hope it's not like the two others that I've missed and didn't really enjoy all that much. If it's anything like this book and anything like The Right Move, like I've said a million and one times, then I'm absolutely going to adore it. No questions asked, no comments, concerns, nothing. I adore this book. I adore the story. I adore the world. I adore Isaiah so much. It was such a pleasure to get to read this book and absolutely devour it in one sitting. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. This was the perfect thing to read in the beginning of the month. I love him. I love him, adore him. I love their story. I love the way it folded. Like it unfolded in such a beautiful way, like from the very beginning to the very end, getting to know these characters and grow with them and go through all these things that they go through with them felt so sweet. It was so sweet and so heartwarming and so beautiful. And I love Kennedy and I love Isaiah and I love the entire cast and the crew and the children and I adore it and I'm so excited for the next book in the series. So, which I believe is also the last book in the Windy, C in the Windy City series, which is so just heart-wrenching, but it's coming in April, I believe, of 2025, and I'm so excited! The next book that I want to be reading is Jujutsu Kaisen, volume 23. Um, if you know anything about Jujutsu Kaisen, then you know, as I'm filming this, there are five chapters left, I believe, and then it's gonna be over, uh, thank God. I don't really have the attachment that I used to have to Jujutsu Kaisen. I know it's probably because the way that the author is writing it 
is really pissing me off. He's really pissing me off. I don't like where the story's going. I don't like where it went from like, pfft, pfft, girl. From like volume, I believe I wanna say 14 maybe on, 15, 16, I started kind of losing interest because if he was killing everybody and their mother. Uh, I don't like that, I don't appreciate that. If I have a favorite character, at least leave me one by the end of the series, you know? That's not what Gege wants to do. So um, I don't really have all that much interest in reading this, but I have it and it needs to go back to the library. So I'm gonna read it. I think this is where I stopped reading the chapters online. Because believe it, at some point or not, I was reading the chapters online because I was so obsessed with it. I think I made it to chapter 130 something online until I gave up and I said he's killing everybody and their mother and I'm not really interested in reading a story where I knew from the very beginning where it was going and then it just completely kept going south, 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 which I don't understand why you would do that as an author. Like, do you want people to stop reading your shit? Because that's what it seems like. He hates every popular character. So... For that reason, I'm just kind of reading this because I have it and because I know it's going to be an easy read. But other than that, I honestly don't know that if I'm going to continue on with the rest of the story. I don't know that I care to know what the ending is going to be because I'm just so pissed off. Maybe that will change. I don't know that it will. But if it does change, I'll let you know. You'll be here. You'll see me pick up the rest of them. And I think I feel the same way about Chainsaw Man as well. I don't really know because I'm reading... The only mangas that I'm reading right now are Spy Family, A Sign of Affection, Jujutsu Kaisen and Chainsaw Man. If you have any recommendations, let me know down below because I do love mangas and animes. But the one that I'm really into right now is um, A Sign of Affection. Not really big on the other three. Spy Family, every time I get a new volume, I eat it up and I love it and I love the story of it. And I can't wait to see where it goes. The other two, Chainsaw Man and this one, I don't really know that I'm loving the arc and half of the time I don't understand what's going on. So for that reason, I don't know that I'm still attached to them as much as I used to be, but with that being said, this is the next book that I'm going to be reading, um, just because I have it. Love Yuki, though. I'm glad she's on the cover. Um, it'll be done in, like, 45 minutes. I don't know that I'm going to pick it up today, maybe if I have time, but uh, today I've spent all my day reading this, so I think I'm going to take a break and then maybe potentially pick this up later. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, and if I don't, I'll probably pick it up. It is Wednesday today, if I'm not wrong. I finished, I picked up and finished the 23rd volume of Jujutsu Kaisen. The only good thing about this was the fact that it was mostly centered on Yuki and Choso, which I absolutely adore. Choso is one of my favorite characters of all time. The only problem is that I've gotten spoiled on something that does happen to him later on in the manga. So seeing him in this one was very bittersweet. I did not know that this was the volume with him with his hair down, shirtless. What a pleasant surprise. It was definitely not what I expected, but definitely a lot more entertaining than I expected, but that's probably because it was Choso that was in this book. Um, otherwise, I probably wouldn't have given it as much as I did. Um, I believe I gave this one 3.5 stars. Not the best, not the worst. Um, very easy to read, very quick to get through, and I finished it within like an hour, so it really was very quick, very easy to get through. That means I get to pick up a new book, which I really want to pick up The Love of My Afterlife by Kirsty Greenwood. Um, I don't know what this is about, to be honest, but all I know is that this is very popular right now. Everyone and their mother is talking about this. Everyone really likes it. Everyone says it's really, really funny, apparently, but it's about this girl who dies. And then in the afterlife, they tell her that she has to find the love of her life to be with him. 
and if she finds him in real life then she gets to be with him and continue to live but if she doesn't then she dies i think that's the premise of it i'm really really excited for it this book came out in june and i've been meaning to read it since then this book is 365 pages very excited to pick it up i don't think i've ever read anything by kirsty greenwood before i think i will probably be picking this up tonight because i am really excited to get into it and I feel like I have nothing else to do so I might as well pick up something to read and this was one of the like most anticipated reads of this year for me because ever since I saw the cover of this book I've known that I want to read it. afterlife and i'm actually like five pages in i just wanted you guys to know that this book is so funny this book is so funny this book might be one of the funniest books that i've ever read um i don't know if that is gonna be like a thing for the rest of the book but as of right now it's really really funny the way that the character dies is so funny the scene right after where she does die is really really funny so if you're looking for like a comedic type of book that deals with like the afterlife i guess or like existentialism then I think you might enjoy this because it's really fun, but I'm only judging by the first five pages. I'll read a little bit more and let you know how I feel about it. But as of right now, it's really, really funny. And I like the main character because it's really, really funny. <laughs> the love of my afterlife. I have 50 pages left until the end but I wanted to do this update because I feel like I haven't updated you since I started it yesterday or last night I guess. I am unsure about how I feel about this book. I started it thinking it was really really funny and it still is really really funny. It feels like a very coming of age story. It feels like the character is like the story is not really about the romance. It's more about the character and how she grows throughout the story and how she like handles things. In the afterlife she gets told that she has to go back to earth or like the afterlife therapist will send her back to earth, send her back into living, into the real world of the living. And she has to make this guy kiss her, basically like Ariel in The Little Mermaid. She has to make this guy kiss her in 10 days. Otherwise, then she has to go back and die. But if he kisses her, he kisses her, then she can continue to live and continue to be in the world and live and whatever and whatnot. But we watch her basically not even follow that line. We just basically watch her how her life looks different in her eyes now that she knows that she died and she's come back and that she's going to potentially die again in 10 days and end up in the afterlife forever. Just watch her go through all these days, all these things, get to know all these people that she's been around her whole entire life, get to know all these people that she's thought something completely different about them when they're not that person at all. And it's just a very eye-opening story. It makes you think about your life, at least it made me think about mine and how my interactions are with people, how I see people, how I treat people, how I talk to people, how I spend my life because they do the whole seven minutes like debacle, like the your life flashing before your eyes for seven minutes type of situation and she gets to see her life and watch how she lived her life for seven minutes and then she realizes like oh this was really how I lived my life and though it didn't look that way to me it looked that way to other people or it looked that way now in retrospect that I'm looking at it from now from this point of view it's not really at all centered on the romance it's more centered on the character as a person. It's been very very interesting definitely not what I thought it would be I thought it would be more cutesy romancy like rom-com type of book and though it is kind of like that I feel like it's more of a literary fiction women's fiction type of book I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna read and I'm gonna finish it and then we'll we'll talk about it I'll give you my rating on it and then we'll talk about whatever book I'm reading next <laughs> I 
literally just read like 20 pages. What the hell? What the hell was that? What the hell? 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 I'm so upset. 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 This cannot happen. This cannot happen. This can't happen. This can't happen. I refuse to believe that this is happening. I refuse to believe that this is the ending. Do not do this to me. I'm gonna be very upset. I'm gonna be very upset. If this is the way that this book ends, I'm gonna be very upset. I want you to know, I'm already very upset. And I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do it, I can't. I ha I, I don't. If this is how the book ends, I don't wanna finish it. Like, why, 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 why? I'm so upset. <laughs>this one 3.75 stars this was really fun the ending kind of redeemed itself i'm not gonna lie um i really really liked the way that the characters were written i liked everything that they went through because it felt very realistic i mean as realistic as a magical realism type of story you're gonna get about the afterlife and you coming out of it to meet the love of your life you know like it felt very realistic to the characters as people because they felt like real people they felt like very th three-dimensional very real very flawed very human i really really liked the way that our main character was written because i felt like she was very relatable to a lot of people and reading about her has made me realize a lot of things about myself and made me open my eyes to things that I do that I don't notice that I do or things that i've done that i've noticed that i do but i don't really tend to like actually think on them and try to change them and stuff like that so for that reason it was really actually very eye-opening and very entertaining and i really liked the romance it was not the romance that i expected at all um but i'm so glad that it was what it was because i felt like that kind of made you open your eyes a little bit more to the point of the story i recommend it if you're looking for a fun take on the existentialism of life you know 3.75 stars this is gonna be the next book that i pick up it is called the brutal prince by sophie lark i don't know anything about this book other than the fact that i think that it's a dark romance if i'm not mistaken um i've seen a lot of people talk about this recently i believe the last person i saw talk about this was bella from throne of pages and she really liked it and i feel like her and my taste are very like closely intertwined and she is one of my favorite booktubers of all time and so I felt like if she liked it then maybe I should give it a chance because I always see this cover and I see the covers for the rest of the series because I believe this is a series and if not a series then it's like a interconnected standalone series type of stories um so I'm really really looking forward to it if you've seen my video uh where I read the like dark romances genre um, then you would know that I really am not the biggest fan of the genre, but I don't know if it's because I don't like the genre or if I don't like the stories that I read for that for that video or maybe I was just having an off time with dark romance or maybe I just didn't find the right ones that click with me. Um, but I do, I have read a couple of like mafia dark romances and I really liked them or at least really, really enjoyed them and they tend to go by very quickly for me. So I felt like I might as well pick up this one. This book is, um, oh, there's art in here. What? Pause. Pause. There's art in here. Oh, I'm gonna eat that up. I'm gonna eat that up. I love me a good art. Okay, this book is not even 300 pages. No way. This book is 281 pages. This will be very easy to finish and maybe I'll pick up a second book tomorrow. <laughs>
Top and Finished, The Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. This is a mafia dark romance about this girl and this guy who end up in like this arranged marriage to join the two mafia families together and they're obviously like very like hateful towards each other and she's from the Italian mafia and he's from the Irish mafia I believe and they end up getting together and getting married because of some incident that she basically makes happen in his house and we just follow their story from there and see them as they get married and do all of that and all of that fun stuff. I really liked it actually. I gave it three stars which I know may not seem like a lot to you but when it comes to dark romances that is a lot for me. I think I prefer mafia dark romances over just the regular dark romances because at least the mafia has a reason for him to be dark you know like the regular dark romances i'm like why are you this way but with the mafia one i'm like okay he's a part of the mafia but he's actually a politician in this one and she's with the mafia so i don't know um i really liked it i liked how it was written it was very very quick and like i said there were so many different like illustrations that were really cute to see it helps you imagine the scene better and the characters better which i really liked very quick very easy read i read it within like maybe three four hours and i had a lot of fun the only only thing that I don't like about this is that the time, the way that time and events are described is like and then three days passed and then it was my wedding day and then a day passed and then it was this and then it was that and it was like more just told as if like we were trying to get done with the book instead of dragging it out by writing the details which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because I don't know what it would have been like had she written like the three days leading up to the wedding versus saying and then three days passed and it was my wedding day i don't know that would be the only criticism that i have but other than that i thought it was very fun very easy very quick to read if you're looking for a dark mafia that or a dark mafia romance that is a little bit more funny then i think you would really enjoy this one i thought it was very very entertaining then i picked up cross the line by simone Sol simone sultani and I, I didn't get really all that far into it i'm on page 24 so literally all of that. Um, this is basically an F1 romance, if you couldn't tell. I think it just came out, honestly, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not really sure when, but as I'm filming this, I know it came out like pretty recently. Um, yeah, I really, really love F1 and it's like a new hobby of mine to follow along with after the Netflix shows because I started it this year and I realized that I actually really like F1 and I'm really entertained by it. All I know is that they kiss. He is like there's a rumor going around about him having like an STD and so he might get dropped from his F1 sponsorship and she is like a sports PR person I think. I'm not really sure and he needs one so I think they're gonna end up working together and also did I forget to mention um she's his best friend's sister yeah F1 is so like such a fast-paced sport I wonder if she's gonna be able the author I wonder if the author is going to be able to pick up on the fast-pacedness of it and be able to write it to where it keeps my attention and I don't get bored very very successful reading week so far honestly this is the most successful I could have ever imagined it going I mean finishing a book a day so far I think not bad. So the plan today was that I would go do some stuff that I needed to do and then and then spend some time today to edit a video that I had to go up today. And mind you, I should have started editing the video yesterday because I promised that it would go up today, which is Saturday. And it's my usual uploading day or like posting day. And the problem with that was is that I didn't start editing yesterday and yesterday was Friday and I had nothing edited um so that was the problem and as you can tell obviously it is right now seven o'clock 7 p.m 7 to 15 i think 
and I have not read anything, not a singular thing, because I have been busy editing the video. I started editing the video this morning at 9, and I went out halfway through. I believe I went out at like 11.30, and I came back home at 3 o'clock, started editing again at 3 o'clock, and I finished just now. So it is uploading right now. I finished the thumbnail, finished the info. All it has to do is finish processing, and then I can post it. So that meant that my entire day has been taken up by editing, making the thumbnail, and running errands. I have not done anything productive, I don't think, other than just finishing that and making the TikTok cucumber salad. So for that reason, I obviously haven't gotten any further in Cross the Line, um, unfortunately. But now, you know, uh, I have caught up on my YouTube subs and everybody's uploading day, and I have uploaded my video it's uploading it's processing right now so i just have to wait for it to finish processing and then i can post it which means i am free i can do whatever i want and i am choosing choosing okay this being the key word because i don't want to read i don't i don't want to read at all this is not the plan this is not the vibe this is not what i want to be doing right now because i feel like i have burnt myself out so fast this week i have read a think a book a day so far um so i want to read you know, I want to, but I also don't want to at the same time. I don't know what that is. I don't know how that is. But all I know is that I have read entirely too much this week. So I have this book and then I have one more book that I need to read to finish this video with having read all of the books that I wanted to read for this video. But I don't know because I have to start filming another video on Monday. And today is Saturday so if I finish this today not happening there's no way in hell that this is finishing today because I don't want to be reading for six five hours I will probably be finishing it tomorrow which means I have to finish it tomorrow and then start the next book tomorrow and finish it tomorrow which could be possible because I'm not going to be spending my entire day out or like editing tomorrow is just a free day I can do whatever I want and will probably be able to finish and start another book tomorrow it all just depends on how I feel because sometimes I just wake up and I don't want to do anything. So if tomorrow I wake up and I don't feel like doing anything, then I'm probably not going to read the book and it's just going to have to go into some other t sort of video. Um, I don't want to rush myself. I don't because rushing myself tends to make me not want to read and I don't want that to happen because I'm enjoying the books that I'm reading. I'm going to try to get as far into it as I can and try to get into the story because I'm sure I'm gonna really really enjoy it once I actually get into the story it's just because I haven't had the time and also I haven't gotten too far into the story to actually get to know them see you in a little bit hopefully see you in in like an hour or two out of 400 I want to say yeah exactly 400 pages I'm not even halfway through and I kind of want to DNF it I kind of want to DNF it I'm not gonna lie to you there's not anything bad about it it's just very mediocre like I don't feel anything towards either of the characters or the F1 aspect of it and I'm like maybe I should just DNF it I have two other books I could pick up that I know I would be able to finish at least one of them today. But I'm going to tell you what the trope is in here. It's basically best friend's sister. She's his best friend's sister. And they feel like they can't be together. Even though they have like this amazing chemistry. And they kissed and they both feel the same way about each other. Because her brother doesn't want him to be with her. Because she dated one of his friends before. And that guy ended up being a douchebag. And he really hurt her. And so now he's like... She's off limits to all of my friends. But mind you, they're all in their, like, late, mid to late 20s. Why are we letting your brother control who you can and can't be with as an adult woman? And you, as an adult man, why are you letting your best friend dictate who you can and can't be with? I know, like, with the bro code, you're like, oh, I don't want to, you know, go for this girl even though my best friend told me, or, like, because my best friend told me that I can't be with her. But, like, really, that's, that's, that's the only problem that we're going to go through? 
They both like each other so much. I don't really care for it. I don't care for the characters. I don't care for the story. And I think I'm convincing myself right now to DNF it. I think that's what we're gonna go. Because I'm like, well, okay. Okay, next. So I think I'm gonna DNF it. It was good while it lasted though, you know? That means I'll have time to pick up volume 16 of Chainsaw Man, which I don't even know if I wanna continue with this series. I don't know if I've said that in this video or another video, but I don't know if I wanna continue with this series either. But right now I have this volume, so I figured I might as well read it because I believe my library just got it in. I'm gonna start and probably finish this one and then we'll probably end this video tomorrow. So let's go. Chainsaw Man volume 16. I gave this one four stars. This was really entertaining and also very, very sad. I feel like when it comes to the Chainsaw world verse, if you will, seeing Denji go through the things that he does in the first arc of the story and then now following him in this arc of the story is so devastating because everybody that he loved just to, like, you know, you know, just doesn't seem to be letting up for him. And I wonder if it ever will. And I think I'm growing a little bit like hopeless. So I can only imagine how Denji would be feeling, you know, because I, as a reader, am starting to feel a little bit hopeless about the story. So imagine you're living the things that he's living. And it's like, when will it ever be enough? Will there be a moment where he will have some semblance of peace, you know, some semblance of happiness that he deserves because he's been through so much shit for no freaking reason. It's heading somewhere. I'm not sure where, but it's heading somewhere. So great read. Okay, you guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know down below if you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you like sort of like just the regular funsies reading week in my life type of vlogs because those are honestly my favorite to watch. I always tend to gravitate towards just learning more about people's lives and how they spend their time and how they make time for reading. So for me, this was a very, very fun week of filming. I had the best time reading some of the best books. I'm still thinking about playing along in my head so strongly on a daily basis, you do not know. It's been a very successful week. I had the best time. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what your opinions were on them. Let me know any other books that you are looking forward to reading that I haven't read yet that maybe I can put on my TBR because I would love some recommendations. And and with that being said, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you did, that means the world to me. Treat yourself to something nice. Have the very best day. And I will see you guys again next week with another video. Goodbye.